In this video, we'll talk about the three main families of moral theories within narrative ethics, consequentialism, deontology, and virtue theory. Let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, what is normative ethics? Well, normative ethics is devoted to examining our moral relations with another. It's one of the three main areas of moral philosophy, which includes value theory and meta-ethics as well. Within normative ethics, there are many moral theories. Moral theory attempts to give us a general principle or a set of principles that tell us what is morally right in a variety of cases. So one of the central aims of moral philosophy is to assess the plausibility of competing moral theories using rational argumentation. Although there are countless moral theories within normative ethics, most of them fall within three main camps, and that's consequentialism, deontology, and virtue ethics. Let's introduce each. One easy way to understand these theories is that they focus on different aspects relating to actions to determine whether an action is right or not. So any given action have things that come before it, like your character traits, your intentions, your motives, and of course things that come out of it, the consequences. And note that's true for any choice you make, whether it's in action or inaction. Moral philosophers disagree on which aspect related to action is the most important thing to assess when assessing the action as a whole. So whether an action is right or wrong, depends on one of these things, each moral theory is going to present a different consideration for which one is the most important. Our first one is the easiest to understand, and that's consequentialism. Consequentialism says the primary thing that we should consider is what comes after an action. The right course of action is the one that will produce the best overall value, the best overall consequences. So it's what's nice about this particular theory. The description is within the name. It's consequences-ism. So the focus here, of course, is maximizing favorable consequences. Consequentialism has many different versions. One version is ethical egoism. Do what maximizes favorable consequences to yourself. That's what determines what you should do in the world. The flip side of that is ethical altruism. Do what maximizes favorable consequences for others. Don't consider your own interest. Only think about what the effects of other people. The most common version of consequentialism, however, is utilitarianism. Utilitarianism includes yourself in ethical calculations, but also everybody else as well. The foundation to utilitarianism is the principle of utility. The principle of utility says, do what maximizes overall favorable consequences for everyone, yourself included, but of course, everyone else. The primary figures for this particular theory include John Stuart Mill, Jeremy Bentham, and some contemporary thinkers are Peter Singer and Will McCaskill. Consequentialism is so influential on modern day ethics that some philosophers say there's only really two main categories of ethics, consequentialism and non-consequentialism. Well, within non-consequentialism, there's still pretty large categories, and the first one is deontology. So deontology, also sometimes called duty theories, claim that the most important part of moral assessment of actions is what comes before the action or perhaps the action itself, whether it's following certain norms or rules. In fact, the etymology of the term deontology comes from the root of rules or duty. So here, the most important thing to evaluate an action are our motives, intentions, our reasons for action. Deontology is the most diverse of the three main families. There are so many different versions. That's because depending on what set of rules you come up with, it's going to be a different version of deontology. That's the first major category here is just coming up with a, some type of list of duties and asking whether your actions or your intentions are following those duties. Some easy examples include the Ten Commandments. If that's the rules that you think you should live by and that's your whole moral theory, it would be a version of deontology because you're asking whether your actions, your motives, intentions are following these lists of rules. Another example is the idea of human rights. If you have a certain list of rights, then say that this is what you need to follow to be a good person. Well, that would be also a version of deontology. However, arguably the most influential version of deontology is Kantianism, named after the philosopher Immanuel Kant. The foundation to Kantianism is what's called the categorical imperative. For Kantianism, reason and morality are one and the same. And so if you're going to have a reason for action, you should be able to think of it as a universal law. This is sometimes called the universality principle. Only act on maxims, your motives, intentions, your reasons for action that could become a universal law of nature. You have to be able to imagine everybody else also using those same reasons for action. And if you can't, or if it leads to some logical contradiction, 
it's wrong. Now, another formulation of the categorical imperative is what's called the principle of humanity or the formula of humanity, which states that we should never treat any person merely as a means or as an object. Instead, treat every person, well, as a person, as an end, a subject, somebody that has reason and autonomy just like you do. So you should treat everyone with the respect that they deserve as rational autonomous beings. The primary figures for Kantianism, of course, is Immanuel Kant himself, but some more recent thinkers include Tom Reagan and Honora O'Neill. Our final major group of moral theories is what's called virtue ethics. It's in fact the oldest of the three. Virtue ethics claims that the most important part of moral assessment of actions is human character. So going back all the way to the beginning of that structure of human action, the primary question we need to ask first is what kind of person should I be? So the focus here, what are good character traits, virtues? What are bad character traits, vices? Virtue theorists will often claim that developing virtues is a matter of practical wisdom. And so we shouldn't just look at a list of principles and try to follow them. But if we were to distill the theory into something like a principle, I think it would go like this. So I call this the virtuous agent principle. Do what a virtuous agent, someone with all the virtues, would do in any given circumstance. Virtues tell you what you should do, and vices tell you what you should not do. This principle is based off of the writings of Rosalind Hursthaus, one of the most influential modern day virtue theorists, but some other primary figures within virtue theory include the medieval philosopher Thomas Aquinas and the ancient Greek philosophers Plato and Aristotle. Well, I hope this brief introduction to these three main families of moral theories was helpful for you. I'll post videos going more in detail of each of these theories in the future. Before we go, please consider liking, sharing, commenting on, or subscribing to the channel. It helps us out. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.